Welcome to Electro Online. Lately I've been getting some questions from viewers and I realized I didn't have any videos to show specific items about projectile motion. So I thought, let's add a few more videos and here's the first one. Even though this one is not specifically projectile motion, it'll help us set up and understand some more concepts when we deal with the several more videos that we're going to do on this particular topic. First of all, we have an object that's being thrown directly upward, so there's only a one-dimensional motion problem, at 45 meters per second. Eventually, it'll reach the highest point. The top the velocity at that highest point, of course, will be zero before it comes back down. What we need to know is what's the maximum height it attains, the final velocity when it comes back down to the ground, and the total time it took to make the entire trip. To help us, we have the three equations of motion in the vertical direction. First, to find the maximum height. So we're looking for this value right here, h max. To find that, we're going to use this third equation, and we're going to solve this equation for delta y. The change in height, delta y, is going to be equal to, we take v final, or vy squared, so the final velocity in the y direction squared, minus, when we bring this across the equal sign, it becomes minus v initial, in the y direction squared, and then we divide that by the coefficients of the change in y divided by 2g. Remember that when we motions and problems of kinematics, we like to call g a negative 9.8 meters per second squared because the acceleration is, of course, downward in a negative direction. Plugging in the values, we get the following. The final velocity squared will be 0 squared because at the top, that's going to be our final velocity here. That's going to be 0 minus v initial squared, that's 45 squared, divided by 2 times a minus 9.8. Using a calculator, 45 squared divided by 2 divided by 9.8 equals, and we get 103.3 meters. 103.3 meters, so roughly 103 meters. I kept an extra decimal place want to eliminate the accumulation of errors in the end. The next thing we want to do is the final velocity when it comes back down. Now let's go ahead and do that. The final velocity when it comes back down, how do we figure that out? Well, maybe what we can do here is we can use this equation again. No problem. Let's go ahead and do that. So let's use the second equation again. We want the final velocity when the object comes back down. All right, so let's write that down. V final squared is equal to V initial squared plus 2G times delta Y. Now, in this case, we need to take the square root of this. So we get V final in the Y direction is equal to the square root of V initial squared plus 2G delta Y. And that is going to be equal to the square root of V initial squared. Well, that will be 45 squared. 45 squared plus 2 times a minus 9.8 times, now what is the change in the height? Well, at the very end, when the ball comes back down, because that's when we want to know the velocity, so the ball goes straight up, when it comes back down, we want to know the V final at that moment, that's what we're looking for, and of course, at that point, the change in Y will be zero, even though it's gone way up there, and by the time it came back, the change from the initial position to the final position will be zero, so therefore this becomes zero. And then it becomes vy is simply the square root of 45 squared, which is simply 45. But it's going to be plus or minus. So let me put that in here. It's going to be plus or minus because when we take the square root of a positive number, the answer could be a negative answer or a positive answer. Squaring a negative answer, you still get a positive. So in this case, since we know that we're on the way down, that will then become a minus 45 meters per second. And notice that, oop, I didn't include my minus sign here. Let me do that again. Minus sign, there we go. You can see then, for any object that's thrown up upwards, whatever its initial velocity is in the y direction, when it comes back down to the same height, that will be its final velocity in the y direction, of course, in the negative direction, so therefore a negative velocity instead of a positive velocity on its way up. Something good to hang on to when we deal with projectile motion. Finally, we need to find the total time in the air. So to do that, 
we're going to use this first equation up here. Time in the air for the total trip. And we use the equation y equals y sub naught plus v sub naught in the y direction times time plus one half g t squared. The final height when we make the total trip come back down to the ground is equal to zero. And the initial height will also be zero. Initial velocity in the y direction, which is 45, so 45 times t, and minus 4.9, because half of g is half of a minus 9.8, which is a minus 4.9, times t squared. Notice we can now factor out a t, so we get 0 is equal to t times 45 minus 4.9t, which means that either t is equal to 0 or... 45 minus 4.9t equals 0, which means that t would be equal to 45 divided by 4.9. For the calculator, we get 45 divided by 4.9, and we get 9.18 seconds. So either the time is equal to zero, meaning it hasn't left yet, and of course then the height will be equal to zero, which is correct, or 9.18 seconds have elapsed, which means the object has reached the maximum height and it's come back down to its original height, and that will take a total time of 9.18 seconds. It turns out that the following can be assumed to be correct, that whatever initial velocity the object has in the y direction, when it leaves the ground, it then reaches the maximum height. When it comes back down, it will have that same magnitude velocity just in the opposite direction, therefore a negative 45 meters per second on the way down versus a positive 45 seconds on its way up. Secondly, the time that it takes to reach the maximum height is exactly the same amount of time as it takes to go back down. So if we take half of this, which is 4.59 seconds, that's the time it takes to reach the maximum height, and 4.59 seconds is the time it takes to come back down to the ground. So those are good things to understand. Now let's go ahead and look at some more projectile problems to understand a little bit more about when we can find, how we can find the maximum height, the maximum range, and things like that. So let's go ahead and try that. 